True. Okay. Not true. Every Sea Org member signs up, goes through security checking. Okay. On a meter. Your whole background, there's, there's a, at, at the time I went in, they were calling it the Johannesburg Forum, and it was just pages and pages of questions about, you know, have you ever killed anybody? Have you ever done this? Have you ever done that? Have you ever infiltrated an organization? Are you here to infiltrate us? It's all done on a lie detector. All that data is then sent, and I was apprised of it at the time, that that data would be sent to Worldwide, the Guardian's office in Worldwide, for an international ethics clearance. If I passed, if they could not find any connection with what I had said on this forum, and I mean, they asked some pretty, pretty personal questions. My, <laughs> my sex life in Scientology is so well documented that I can't even begin to care about it. It just wouldn't be worth it. Uh, I, I have to say to you in all frankness that, that when I, uh, I, I stumbled across the little uh, invoice fixing project on flags, so I was the ship's manager of the Apollo just before it came in here to Florida. And the church was doing a little invoice changing project directly underneath our, our office on the, on the ship. And uh, I got my wife and I sent out on missions because I didn't want to be here when the IRS hit them, when they got into Clearwater. So I was, uh, I was probably uh, not quite the uh, perfect Scientologist in that respect, but I, I just couldn't see how they could get away with it. And, and as it turns out, they're not, which is great. Uh, that down below your office, when you were here in uh, Clearwater, that there was a, uh, uh, a department that was actually changing invoices and had an invoice machine and so forth. <coughs> Uh, would I be correct in saying that, that they did not keep regular types of accounting books of any kind? Oh, oh no, there's specific for policy forbidding it. So there are no books which say, or ledgers which show... Standard accounting procedures are forbidden. It's too easy to reconcile. They can be checked. There were no ledgers kept as you would in standard bookkeeping procedures. and. And as a result of what I went through with the church and what I testified to in, in the IRS hearing, those documents are very, very easily changeable. All you have to do is take out one week's income packet and slap in a new one, the same number. And when you got your own printer and printing press, it's pretty easy to make two sets of invoices, or three, or four. I mean, how hard is it to take out a week's worth of invoices and put in another set when you've got nine dollar and fifty cent a week labor costs. The IRS in terms of the church's overall income during the time I was responsible for it did not jive with the reports of the church of Scientology and they're still looking for the money. Uh, uh, how do you tell which records are true and which records are false? Well I, I guess that would be in relation to the area you were examining. I, I personally would not uh, look at it. I, I was sitting in an office with Marty Greenberg, who was the CPA for the church, when he told us how they were impeding the IRS investigation. That's Marty so Greenberg. I certainly wouldn't uh, place any confidence in their financial records at all. You're saying when the IRS was investigating the Church of Scientology, the church employed a CPA that actually falsified the records? Yeah, he's a member of the Guardian's office. And you also said that uh, there were many available. ways... He wasn't available for testimony during the IRS trial for some reason. <laughs> That's uh, Mr. Finance. I understand it is a policy of the C organization to be Fabian, to put an organization like St. Hill there that you think is the organization that runs the church on a worldwide basis, and while you're busy trying to get something out of them, all of the records can be put on a ship and moved somewhere else in the world. One of, the, one of the jobs that I had as a station ship captain on the West Coast was to have that ship ready at any time to go into L.A. Harbor and cart all the files off. Were you promised any kind of cures for problems at any step of the way? I, I, I was promised that I would become an immortal <clears throat> being, capable of operating with or without a body. That means in, in, in actually actually controlling, being able to control things and create effects in a room such as this without having to be physically present was, was to have that land base in Mexico where we could scoot into LA and load them all up. The Excalibur was bought for that purpose. 
to load the executives and files off and right down the coast in Ensenada and set it up and move it on out from there. Do a self-defense training course with one of the Guardian's office black belt people when I went to be Quentin, B Quentin Hubbard's bodyguard. You know, and I said, well, I've already had self-defense training in the service and so on. And he said, well, listen, what do you think they're going to, you better be able to defend yourself. What do you think that they're going to do when they find out what you guys are doing? You better know how to defend yourself. I like to see people, like I said, I've got, the stuff I've got is nothing. There are people that I know of that have got things that would really curl your hair. And they're afraid to step out. And I hope that these hearings will... <clears throat> Guardian's office is a little short staffed right now handling all of the flaps and hopefully all of the things that happen will make them too undermanned to, to resort to anything silly like, you know, you know, physical harm to people and the people who would like to come out would like to resume their place in society and become productive members of a community could come out and do it without being chastised for having made a mistake and joined the organization. I mean, let's, let's face it. Uh, I helped a man who was wanted by the federal government get out of this country, and I got him out real fast. That's good criminal okay, I, did, I, I don't know if the statute of limitations is up or not. I'm not here to defend myself. I've done what I've done, and you can make do with whatever you want to out of it. I'm here because I know of a lot of very, very decent people who have been jacked around by this organization. Their family. What is your What is your reason for coming here today? because I want to go back to living a normal life. And there are an incredible amount of decent people that went into Scientology in good faith and have been betrayed. And they are no longer able to live normal lives and they have to fear for their family because of the fact that they're afraid of getting bumped off for what they know. And that's what it really boils down to. I, you know, I'm probably being really, you know, uh, uh, heavy bearing on this, this fact, but, uh, I don't let anybody know where I'm living, and, and, and I can't get married until I'm certain that I know that my daughter, who's hidden, well hidden somewhere, and, and my wife, B, and I are going to be able to live a, a normal life. And if, and if you do that in, during the course of the, of the IRS trial, I have been through all of the federal government's documents on Scientology. I mean, stacks of them. I read them all. The simplicity of it is, is that it is the goal of Scientology to make every single person on this planet a Scientologist and to get the technology that Scientology has, both administrative and, and uh, counseling technologies, integrated into the so the society and every single person who signed one of those billion year contracts was willing to put their life on the line to make sure it happened for a billion years. What caused you to come down here? If I can go a step further... Howard dies a thousand deaths, and I don't intend to run some Scientology for the rest of my life. We're going to have it out. That's all there is to it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to destroy my life. I'm not going to be away from my family. I'm not going to remain away from my daughter because there's some organization that puts out the picture to everybody in it that it's powerful enough to come out, come around and do them in if they don't play ball. And I think it's time for that kind of stuff to stop. All they. I made it through Nam. My life's been blessed since then. All right. I don't have anything to lose except my life. And I've lived a very full life, and I, I don't intend to spend the rest of it running from Church of Scientology, period. Story that... Okay. ...is so fantastic and incredible, and as Mr. Caldebank just said, bizarre, that unless the people are watching television... <laughs> They can't this, see the forest for the trees. This story, this story will not get out to the public. How can we get it out to the public? You guys have just scratched the surface. You haven't, you, you haven't even touched any of the good stuff yet. <laughs> You're just getting to it. And hopefully what's going on here will bring people out of the woodwork that can tell you stories that make my stuff look like small potatoes. One other question that I have, and then I'll leave you alone because it appears like I'm trying to crucify and chastise you. Did you know what these hearings were about before you came down here? All I knew was that hearings were being conducted.